welcome to Japan Travel 101. Um, my name is Jessica Carnwell. Um, I've spent about five weeks in Japan um, over the course of the past couple of years. And this over here is my husband, Adam Cornwell. He um, spent about two months on a study abroad back in college and also spent a year from 2009 to 2010 in Japan. For anybody at RIT or maybe taking Japanese classes, the, the KIT program um, is, is pretty darn good. Um, yeah. Yeah, that was why I was there for that in 2007. So. All right. So these are just some of the things we're going to be discussing um, in our panel today. We're going to be talking about um, what you need to do before you actually leave U.S. soil for Japan. Um, some things that you need to do way in advance, some things not so far in advance. Um, and then we're going to be talking about basically how to survive in Japan once you get there, um, exchanging your money, communicating back home, um, buying food, uh, communicating um, with in Japanese people getting around, that sort of thing. So yeah, um, before you uh, actually get there, you have to figure out, uh, you know, sort of what you're going to do. Um, and put everything together. So uh, I, I think that a good way to do that is to figure out, first of all, what what do you want to do in Japan, um, and sort of use that as as your you know to guide uh, the rest of your you know putting your trip together. Um, so you know, are there particular things that you think are important uh, to see? Um, and uh, you know, say, do you, do you really are you really interested in Japanese culture, cultural things, traditional cultural things, or uh, you know, more of like anime tours and things? Um, etc. And uh, seafood is pretty important too, um, because J J Japan is, uh, you know, they have, uh, you know, they're always usually, uh, you know, proud of having four distinct seasons. Being in the Northeast here, I mean, we don't think that much of that, but, you know, that's kind of a big thing in an anime, actually, even. Um, that's, you know, the difference between seasons is, is portrayed quite strongly. Um, so, I mean, you, don't, you might not necessarily want to go in the rainy season, because there is kind of a rainy season. Um, and winter's not too bad, though. Um, it's colder, but it doesn't snow all that. So. Um, and, uh, I mean, trip length is really only a big deal. If you're planning on staying more than 90 days, because a, a, a tourist visa is only good for 90 days. Tourist visa is the visa that you get if you just kind of show up. Um, you're going to fly over there and, you know, walk through uh, immigration. Um, you, yeah. You'll by default basically get stamped with a tourist visa. Yeah, if you don't have any other specific purpose, like you're not going there to work, or you're not going there as a student of a Japanese school, then you're going to get a, a tourist visa. And tourist visa is only good for 90 days, which means that in order to stay there for more than 90 days, you'll have to exit the country and re-enter before staying there for longer. And a lot of people who are trying to stay there for longer but don't have, or aren't a student, or aren't working, um, will uh, sort of, you know, hop to South Korea and back. You know, you know, for a couple of days. So, and usually they'll, they'll give you another tourist visa, but you can only do that for a few times before they catch on. Uh, so, uh, some important things back that you really want to take uh, care of ahead of time. Um, so, yeah, passport is kind of important. Or you're not going to go very far. Yes. Um, I actually had the, the pleasure of reapplying for a passport recently. Um, you're going to want to do that plenty in advance. Um, it didn't take me too long to receive my uh, passport, actually. However, historically, it can take um, more than a month after you send in your application for your passport to arrive. So you're going to want to do that well, well in advance of your trip. Um, passports are good for several years. So if you know when you're going, you just apply for your passport as soon as you have your trip book, basically. Um, so you'll get it in time. Um, and as we mentioned before, tourist visa is only valid for 90 days. Keep your passport with you at all times. Uh, Bas I believe, basically, I believe technically yeah. they can kick you out of the country if you don't have your, your visa, your passport to show um, if a police officer happens to stop you on the street. So just always carry it with you no matter what at all times when you're in Japan. It, that's also probably one of your better forms of you know, identity. Um, in case something happens. Um, and also a secondary ID, like driver's license um, or some other kind of photo ID uh, is probably a good thing to have. 
Um, the uh, rail pass we'll talk about in a little bit that there's a way to, if you're going to take a lot of trains, you can save some money. Um, and uh, if you don't know Japanese, you probably want to get some good maps that you know have places listed uh, in, in Romaji, which is you know transliterated uh, Japanese into you know English, English character. Um, and uh, if you're bringing computers, cameras, anything, back that stuff up before you leave with it. If you have files, because you never know what's going to happen. Um, <coughs> it could rain. Uh, your luggage could go away. Uh, you know, maybe some, maybe Tokyo Tower will explode and fall on your, you know, hard drive. Uh, so <laughs> you never know. Make sure you, you know, have uh, you have your stuff, uh, you know, stored somewhere else. Because we all know from anime, if anything's gonna blow up, it's, it's gonna the Tokyo, Tokyo Tower. Tower. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah, it's probably you know you might want to have an idea of where you're gonna stay uh, before you get there. Um, so uh, you know, just make sure you can actually uh, find somewhere that has uh, vacancy. Uh, it's a good idea to book ahead. Uh, you may also get better better uh, um, for how little breaks that way. Um, Japan has a variety of different hotels, um, including what we usually consider like you know we don't consider you know think about them as being a specific type of hotel, but our Western style hotels with you know. Uh, a bed. Uh, <laughs> a bed in your own bathroom and, yeah. you know, like a dresser. Um, so yeah, there's kind of, you know, a, kind of a, a, scale, a gradient in terms of cost of those. You have the business hotels on one side, which are, are cheap, are usually cheaper. Um, and you get, you know, no extras, only you should sometimes do the breakfast included, but um, you get really reasonable rates on, on business hotels. Um, versus something like you know your uh, Hilton or your you know other Tokyo Disney yeah hotel yeah which I mean those are all there but with business hotels are usually what uh, Western style um, but uh, not so much on the uh, amenities there um, hey, capsule hotels are really more of a novelty um, you, you've probably heard of, heard of them uh, I had I, I I you know had to have that experience I tried that once but they're really mostly for uh, drunk businessmen who don't want to have you know after the last subway. Uh, you know. They missed the last train call. So, yeah, you can stay somewhere for the night. So yeah. Uh, you know, you've probably heard of Love Hotels. Those aren't actually really for you staying in them. So, yeah. Uh, hostels are a good choice if you're really trying to save money. Um, the, there are some uh, booking sites like uh, hostelworld.com where you can find those. Um, and you, you know, if you're, you, you may end up in a, in, in a room with, uh, you know, some people, uh, other people, or, or in a really, really, really tiny room. But uh, they're cheap. I mean, like thirty dollars, twenty to thirty dollars a night for a uh, you know a place to stay. If you're not, you know, if, if you know if that works for you, then uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Which one? Which one? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 hostels. Sorry. Hostels. Yeah. Yeah, hostels are are basically extremely cheap, and that's because either you're sharing a room with other people, like strangers, you'll be sleeping in the same room, and then there's going to be a community bath um, bath area, like you know. A couple of showers that are shared amongst all the people in the hotel, or your room's just going to be incredibly tiny, like a one or maybe two person hotel room. Well, we, yeah, it's the, in Japan, they tend to measure room sizes and sort of like the by number of tatami mats you, that could fit in there. Tatami is kind of a standard size, it's not really. But um, so uh, some hostels will have like a one and a half tatami room, which is basically enough to fit. A you know a futon and uh, like a bag, so <laughs> but you know it's cheap. So yeah, they're sometimes, really inexpensive. So. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, Ryokan and Onsen, you, uh, well, no, an Onsen resort usually will have is you know has like a Ryokan style uh, 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 lodging. Um, the Ryokan are pretty much like traditional inns. Uh, now because they're more of a tourist thing, they tend to be more expensive. Um, and there are, there are places that are, have a lot, you know, a really high density of ryokan um, and, and onsen, like Hakone, which is just outside of Tokyo, has a lot of onsen, and anywhere that has onsen is going to, you know, the hot springs, um, is going to have a lot of, um, you know, the sort of traditional style hotels. And there are, there are booking sites you can sort of use to find those, too. Um, that's an interesting experience, too. They usually, usually also include a meal. Um, the, the rooms, um, at least the one that we stayed at, we splurged and stayed at one for one night. Um, the room was very large. Um, it was actually like kind of two rooms split uh, with like a deck area. It's pretty nice. You, yeah, sometimes it actually but it, it animates stuff. It's fun to see like you know uh, the the you know high school trip episode thing where they'll go to an onsen, oh, you know, yeah. ryokan, and it's like a bunch of people staying in one you know area or sort of room thing. Um, yeah, it's basically that. So.
And then um, almost, it's going to have boutons too. It's not going to be a, a raised bed. It's going to be the, the mattress on the floor. Right? Yeah. Um, so mo most most hotels, you know, a lot of hotels will have English websites now for booking you know, for Japanese. Uh, of course, you know, hotel chains will have uh, English websites. And uh, there are also, I mean, the, the real kind of the best place I found for looking up those is like JapaneseGuestHouses.com. That was a pretty good one. Um, Some of the really smaller hotels um, or hostels especially might only do like email reservations where you just email them and say, hey, I want to stay here from this and this date. Yeah, do you have agencies and then they'll, they'll basically just email you back and forth and set it up. Um, but most websites will, or most hotels will have a website for booking. Um, so, uh, if, if you've ever flown internationally before, you're probably pretty familiar with this. But in general, with flying, you want to book early. Um, so you can compare prices and, uh, um, yeah. I also find that uh, credit, if, you're, if you have a credit card uh, and you're not getting reward points, you might as well eventually try to switch to a credit card that does give you reward points. Because, you, you know, if you're spending money anyway, you might as well use that to apply, you know, for, uh, you know, points you can use toward airline miles to make it cheaper when you fly. Um, which is, you know, ends up being a, yeah, so that, that can help a little bit. Um, so. And stopover flights aren't really all that fun, but they uh, sometimes are a little less expensive. If you're leaving from Rochester, you're going to have a stopover <laughs> somewhere. Um, uh, Japan has two big airlines, uh, uh, ANA and JAL, and uh, um, yeah, I mean, there's nothing particularly special about them, but they have, they have a, a fleet of newer planes. Um, that are, and they tend to actually have nicer seats, I think, <laughs> which, you know, is a big deal if you're flying for that long. So, um, and then also the meals would be sort of, you know, you can get, you yeah. know, Japanese food in your, you know, for your meal, which is kind of nice. The flights are, we didn't actually um, <clears throat> confirm it, but it's, it's at least a 13 hour flight. Depending on where you fly, from over here and depending on your, your you know, stopover, where you're stopping over and stuff. Um, it's like, you know, it can be anywhere from, you know, like 13, 14 hours. Or more, um, so it's sitting for a while. The seat's kind of important. Major uh, major airports like uh, JFK down in New York City um, can have direct flights where it's nonstop, but you're going to be in that plane seat for a very long time. Yeah. Um, there are meals included, of course, uh, but bring a lot of stuff to do on the plane. Um, the the airport uh, until recently that most uh, flights from America have gone into is uh, Narita, which is. Um, it's actually, it's, it's, it's outside of Tokyo. It's not in Tokyo. Um, the train takes a half an hour um, about that. And, yeah, it's uh, the airport to the center of Tokyo. Uh, recently, Haneda Airport, which is actually sort of in Tokyo, um, uh, recently increased, they built a new international terminal, so they're taking more international flights. You might be able to find a flight that goes to there. There's a monorail that goes from Haneda to uh, sort of the rest of Tokyo in the subway system. Um, and if you're, if you want to, if you're, if you're, I mean, most people would probably head to Tokyo as your sort of primary base. Um, but there are other airports and other regions of Japan if you're more interested in visiting uh, those other regions. Um, Kansai would be the area that Osaka and Kobe and Kyoto are in. Um, but uh, yeah, it's easy enough to get between any of the regions in Japan, but by train, then you know wh where you land is almost kind of arbitrary. So yeah, <laughs> yeah that's Japan. So, um, I mean, uh, Tokyo and, and Osaka and Kyoto and everything are all in uh, the main island of Honshu. And, uh, oh yeah, I've got a laser pointer, how about that? <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so Honshu is the, 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 you know, the main island. Um, and then, uh, I haven't been to Hokkaido yet, but uh, I've heard that, you know, depending on, the, if you like uh, um, more nature-y things, uh, then oh, Hokkaido is probably not a, not a bad place to visit. But, uh, you know, uh, there's actually going to, pretty soon there's going to be a Shinkansen line that actually runs all the way from Tokyo to uh, Sapporo. Sapporo's sort of the big city in um, Hokkaido. So um, that'll, be, that'll be cool if you'll be able to get there a lot faster. Um, there's actually a tunnel that runs between them. Um, so, yeah. The other islands, I, I've been to Shikoku, but, you know, most people stick around, uh, you know, Tokyo, Osaka, and Kyoto, so that's all where I want you. Tokyo on the back Tokyo is... Where is Tokyo? Uh, there's Tokyo, yeah. How about that? Okay. Um, so before you go, 
Uh, make sure that you have sort of emergency plans um, for not just yourself, but also for contacting the people back home who might be worried about you when they see that there's been a earthquake in Japan on TV. Um, people will, if you're like on the other side of Japan, people will probably be concerned about you and want to get confirmation from you that yes, you're still alive and everything's fine. I was back in America when this stuff happened a couple of years ago. My relatives were like, is everything, you know, are you okay? I'm like, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I sort of have been back here for like eight months now. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and, and also, uh, you know, have a plan for in case your airline, uh, your flight gets canceled or delayed or postponed for any reason. Uh, that happened to me the time I was supposed to join Adam during his study abroad. Uh, my flight was canceled because there was a typhoon happening in Japan at the time. So I had to reschedule, you know, the airline was good. They helped me reschedule a flight like three days later, but then you know, we had to rearrange our hotel at the last minute and it was, it was kind of pain in the butt. But, you know, just be aware that those sorts of things can happen. You know, like stay calm, you know, don't scream and shout at the, the poor airline people on the phone because they can't help that there's a typhoon. Uh, but, you know, try to get things rescheduled as quickly as possible, contact your hotel, anyone they're supposed to be meeting over there, make sure they know what's going on too. Um, yeah, so, so basically just keep it in mind that anything can happen and have a plan for what that happens. And if you want to, you can register with the U.S. Embassy in Japan as well so that they know that you're a U.S. citizen in Japan. So that something happens, they can, they can um, you know, like... Basically they'll they'll know that you're there, and you know if you're yeah. missing, you'll, they'll look for you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, in general, earthquakes aren't a big deal. Um, and you know, I only occasionally, which is like you know, a couple of years ago we found that out. But uh, yeah, in, in, in general, it's like you know, you you you, you sort of wait. Yeah, you know, it's, it's not even that that frequent, really. But uh, yeah, stuff happens. Just like any trip. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you have same same with California. I mean, you know, all you know, Los Angeles could just kind of disappear into the void. Um, so uh, you might want some money when you're there, that's kind of important. Um, I, before like the last decade and a half, Japan was considered to be almost entirely a cash-based society, where almost nobody took credit cards. Um, but uh, that's not the case anymore. And so uh, almost everyone will take cards, but uh, pretty much just Visa and MasterCard. You probably want to have like, one of each just in case, because sometimes um, you'll find that one works and one doesn't, depending on different payment processors and all that. Um, but it, it's good to have cash anyway. Um, Especially if you're going to more rural areas. Yeah, or smaller like if you're places. Going to a street festival, you know, the vendors yeah. might not have a credit card machine. Street vendors don't. <laughs> street vendors only take cash. And in small, small, little independent stores in the middle of nowhere, probably haven't, you know, they haven't seen a computer before, and they probably only take cash. Um, so. Well, no, I, I mean, there are there are places that literally, yeah. There's no, no internet service um, in that area or something. So yeah, I mean, you can do money exchange. You can do money exchange actually with banks before you leave, or even like AAA offices. Um, you can get the yen before you leave for your trip, or once you get there, most airports will have a currency exchange counter where you can give them their US dollars and they will give you yen in exchange. Good news, the exchange rate is better now than it's been in the last five years. So. It finally is approaching like that, you know, the standard of 100 yen per per uh, dollar. Um, which makes the math. Yeah, you know, it makes math a lot easier. Uh, the last couple of years, it's been like 70 something, which has not been so pleasant if you're buying, you know, stuff over there. And uh, just be aware that um, banks often have, you know, how when you go to an ATM that's not your bank's ATM and they charge you a fee. Well, when you're going to an ATM in another country that doesn't belong to your bank then the fee gets a lot bigger. So, you have that fee that it's not your bank, and you have a foreign transaction fee. Yeah, um, so a good idea is to contact your bank ahead of time, let them know that you are traveling outside of the US so that when they, when it shows up on your bank statement that someone bought something with your credit card in Japan, they're not like, wow, someone stole your credit card in Japan. They know that, yeah, yeah, actually it's you there purchasing things, but also check and see how much it's gonna cost you if you have to end up going to the ATM in Japan. Just so you're aware and you don't accidentally overdraw your your balance and then you know because you got hit with a thirty dollar fee you didn't know it was coming so. um the uh, credit cards actually can have a foreign transaction fee as well as far as i know um I capital feel like thirty dollars well it, it, it depends on how much money you spend yeah Absolutely. it depends on how much money you're taking out of your because the fee that you get hit with is, is 
somewhat dependent yeah, it, on it's, how much you're withdrawing. It's usually not that. I mean, if you buy something that's, you know. I think it, I think it was like. What? It, it, no, it's like it's a, it's a, it's a it's a fraction of a percent, usually. Um, plus like some flat thing. It's usually like um, maybe there's, a dollar or less than a dollar, and then, then, and then a, also like a fraction of a percent of the uh, amount. Um, Anyways, just check with your bank and yeah. find out what it is so that way you know ahead of time so you're not surprised. As far as credit cards go, Capital One <laughs> credit cards do not have a foreign transaction fee. I um, that's subject to change, but I actually keep I have a Capital One card just for just for that. I don't use it for anything else. Um, yeah. So getting around. <laughs> so yeah, um, you, trains are great, and we don't really have them so much in America. So you, you might not know how great trains are, but it's not oh my like, god, it's not like trains <laughs> here where you know they run late and they're slow. They I, are super. Yeah. I mean, it's sort of like you can sort of stumble out of your house, you know, and be it walk to a train station, in, you know, in ten minutes, and then an hour later be halfway across the country. So, Did you have a chance to ride the train? Uh, yeah, yeah. So the, 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 this is, you know, this style. It's the the Shinkansen, which is the the bullet train. Um, There's no turbulence. You just like smooth. Yeah, you. I mean, it's it's almost it's almost sort of uh, surprisingly not very exciting because of how smooth it is. I mean, it's, <laughs> you're like, wow, this is gonna be so exciting, and, and you know, you you hear the the motors ramp up and they keep ramping up and they keep ramping up, and you're like, wait a second, it doesn't feel like I'm going that fast, and you can't actually see the scenery. So it's like 200 miles an hour. Uh, <laughs> but it feels like so. you're standing still and then you're there. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, yeah I, so yeah, going between Osaka and Tokyo takes a little less than three hours. Um, and that's sort of almost the distance between like Washington and Florida. Uh, so. <laughs> um, there's also subways. Um, most really big cities will have subways, such as Tokyo, um, Osaka, and the, the subways are pretty good too. Um, you know, the, the trains, the cars for the subway come very frequently. Uh, they, when the when the platform counter tells you that there's going to be a car there in one minute, there will be a car there in one minute. Yeah, that, that, okay. <laughs> ten seconds. Ten, if a train is ten seconds late, that's shocking. So. Yeah, the, the, everything is going to run on time. Don't, don't, you know, it's not Amtrak where it's like if you're an hour late, you might still make it. <laughs> That's, yeah. Um, <laughs> then there's also buses, taxis, rental bikes, rental cars, and walking. Although I think we took a taxi once. Yeah, we also, I took a taxi once, and it turns out we couldn't find the hotel. It turns out it was around the block. We yeah, got in the taxi, we, got yeah. out of the taxi. It's yeah, like, we took like a two-minute taxi ride because we didn't want to carry our bags. We thought it was going to be like a, a mile away, and it was like. I mean, if, if you if you really if you're really having you know if you if you uh, you know sort of want to get somewhere without having to you know sort of have to walk around have, you know in circles to try to find it you know taxi might be the most direct way. They can be a little bit expensive, um, or you know it's, it could just be a good experience, an interesting experience because you know the taxi drivers wear white gloves and the doors open automatically and all those stuff. Um, yeah, compared to New York City. Uh, <laughs> sometimes there's seasonal holiday tickets for um, trains and well, well, mostly yeah. trains, but um, so the, the rail pass. The rail pass actually you can only get a rail pass. Oh, first of all, rail pass is only good for Japan Rail. Japan Rail runs. What is a rail pass? Well, we're getting there. Um, <laughs> yeah, Japan Rail runs the trains uh, that really connect with most major cities, as well as all the Shinkansen. And they also run a loop line that goes around Tokyo. But um, the subways are not run by Japan Rail. Um, the rail pass is basically like an all you can ride sort of uh, thing that you, you know, pay one price, you basically get a little booklet thing. And when you uh, want to get on a train, you don't have to buy a ticket or anything. You show the little booklet thing to the, the you know, uh, person at the ticket counter thing, and you walk right by. Um, so, um, if you're going to be riding a lot of, it trains a lot, like if you're going to go to a lot of different places that are kind of far apart, within a few days, it's a really good deal. It can save, and it's also kind of con pretty convenient. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, though, is that it's only good, um, depending on which, which rail pass you buy, it's only good for like one week or two weeks. <coughs> they go up to uh, either three weeks or a month, I forget exactly Yeah, but where. Like, it's only good for a set time, so the first time you use it, that's when it starts, and you have to make sure that, you know, you 
take all your trains within that time period and then it's not good anymore, you'll have to start paying for them again. Um, also, it has to be purchased before you leave for Japan. Because what you do is you apply for it, they're going to mail it to your house, they're going to, it's like a little, um, like, exchange form that you're going to get, and you go to Japan, you go to a station that accepts the exchange forms, they're going to, you're going to give them the form, then you get the rail pass. But you have to have that form before you leave. Because it's only for foreign tourists. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, so the much. pass is not something that someone in Japan can buy, it has to be bought as a tourist outside of Japan. Also, um, from what I from what I remember, um, from what I understood from the website, they they expire after three months. So you want to buy it before you leave, but not, not more than too far. Not, not more than three months before you leave, because then it'll expire before you even get there. Um, there are some limitations, like the really super <coughs> super crazy fast Shinkansen you can't take, but the slightly slower ones you can take, so it's all good. The, the normal trains are, yeah. will be covered, yeah. um, and then subway cars. Uh, cards, you know, it's like a prepaid card, you put $20 in the machine, you get a $20 card, you just type it. Scooter, motorcycle, can you use those? Um, I, I, I don't have any, I don't have any experience with driving over there. Um, technically you can drive without having to get a Japanese driver's license. Um, but you probably don't want to get stopped by the police, that won't end well. Especially if, you, if you're Japanese only, so, so plus you're going to have to be, you know, reading signs in Japanese and driving, which might be different. I, I, don't, I don't know if anywhere, I mean, you can rent cars, I don't know if you can rent scooters, I've never really seen that. Scooters are sort of cheap enough that, I don't know, <laughs> you can practically just buy one. <laughs> but, I, yeah, I, I, I don't know about renting scooters, I, I, I do know you can rent cars, but, yeah. Yeah, you can actually, if you go to... AAA, you can get an international driving permit. Oh, that was, uh, American driver's license, but you can get an international driving permit, which actually is not, which is literally just a translation of your um, American license into different languages so that, uh, you know, people in other countries have an idea of what, um, what your driver's license says. Yeah, <laughs> what, what, you're, what you're actually licensed, how you're licensed to drive um, so that they can take appropriate action when they pull you over, I guess. But uh, <laughs> I, I don't know. I, there, there are a lot of caveats and ins and outs of that that I'm not really familiar with. Yeah, um, we, we really didn't take the normal motor transportation. So, um, yeah, so uh, the pre, there are a lot of prepaid cards are a really easy way. Um, uh, yeah, for subways, because you know you, you put like twenty dollars on there. Um, I mean, they're sort of moving to this in, in other places around in, in America too. It's like a subway gift um, card. You, you pay for it yeah. in advance, and then you can um, use it to get in. And then once all the money on the card is gone, you can recharge it. With it's just faster than buying a ticket every time. Yeah. Uh, so if you need to call people, uh, there are still pay phones over there actually, um, uh, but you probably won't use them. I mean, use them. Too much. Uh, there used to be a lot of you know vending machines selling calling cards and all that, but uh, kind of died off. Yeah. In, you know, with internet calling. Uh, if, obviously, if you need to call back home, then I mean the cheapest way of doing that now is to use Skype or Google Voice or something like that. Uh, voice over IP. Um, you can actually uh, get cell phones, you can rent cell phones, or you can uh, get prepaid ones. Um, there are places you can get those at airports. You can also arrange online to have them. Uh, you can pick those up, you know, somewhere. Um, you're, if you have, if you're trying to use your your current, you know, smartphone you have, uh, then that could get really expensive really quick. If you uh, don't have an international calling plan, um, so you know, depending on your circumstances, you want to look up, uh, you know, what your needs are for that. Uh, yeah, obviously, data roaming is. Is really really expensive. It might still be useful to bring your smartphone with you and just turn off the, the satellite access. Yeah, so you make, sure, make sure you turn off your cell radio. Yeah. Yeah, but that way you can still use wireless to you know use the internet or you know any internet based apps you have um, or, when you're in a, a Wi-Fi area. A lot of hotels actually won't have Wi-Fi, but they'll have a, an Ethernet uh, jack in the room. Um, Which is only good. To get new, I mean, fancier hotels will have Wi-Fi, but you know I stayed in super cheap ones, so. Uh, um, internet cafes probably have Wi-Fi too, but um, 
Uh, Reading around Tokyo, there are a lot of places that all have public Wi-Fi. McDonald's actually is a good one uh, for anything clean up. Um, but like, outside of Tokyo, public Wi-Fi is a little bit harder to find. They're usually like uh, access points you have to pay for. Um, okay. uh, so yeah, uh, it's probably good. Might, might, might be a good idea to know Japanese if you're in Japan a little bit, at least a little bit. Um, but uh, you know, if you, if you only so if your if your knowledge of Japanese is entirely from anime, then you might know less than you think you know. And, yeah. Uh, so I, I I think it's a really good idea to, to at least know how to read katakana, but that's because I like knowing where I'm going and what I'm doing. Yeah, so, <laughs> so for people who aren't familiar, there's the Japanese have three different um, alphabets that they use to write with. There's kanji, which is uh, characters that you can have like a whole word meaning. Derived, from, derived Chinese. from Chinese. Um, there's katakana, which is pretty much only used to write foreign words. Let's this stuff so in like, here. So like hamburger. <laughs> yeah, this is Macdonaldo and Game Musenta. So the yeah. fun, the fun thing about katakana is that almost it's almost always like an English word written out in Japanese. So yeah, you, you like you you look at this, it's not that hard. You can uh, Game Musenta, like an arcade game center. <laughs> and then the third form of writing is hiragana, um, which is hiragana and katakana are both more like our alphabet, where the character has one meaning and uh, like a phonetic meaning. So you know the character ka is read as ka. So you can, if you know all the characters, you can sound out the word and figure out what the word means. Um, so katakana and hiragana. Um, are probably the easiest for you to learn in a short period of time. You can just learn it using flashcards. Um, so or if you, if you have if you have the time and motivation, it'd be a good idea to learn how to read those. Um, it'll help you read most things that you're going to need to read over there. It's sort of like if you go to a if you go to a restaurant that doesn't have an English menu, but you know it's more like an American style restaurant. Everything's going to be written in katakana, and they're English words. But you know if you don't know how to read katakana, then you won't be able to read you know to know what they are. So I don't know. I just I. There's only 46 characters in hiragana and 46 characters in katakana. Um, and if you want to learn anything but don't really want to learn too much, then katakana is the way to do it. Um, it's fun, actually kind of it's a fun challenge to try to sound these things out and figure out what they are. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, and also, you know, general basic phrases. You pick up a phrase book. Um, it might be sort of useful to know, especially for ordering in restaurants. Um, it really, if you're if you want to just stick around Tokyo, you can get by on just nothing. Um, but I like exploring in the middle of nowhere, so. Tokyo, because they have so many foreign visitors, a lot of signs will be translated into English letters. Uh, so it's easier. Um, but also, we kind of skipped the middle section there, but. Um, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, but, but uh, this is actually yeah. kind of an important so point. Basic, With basic uh, the, 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 the um, dietary issues, um, most restaurants won't actually make dietary mod modifications for, for yeah, different uh, dietary needs. Um, so if you you know the, if, if you can ask you know if you, if you can ask somebody to translate something if you have an allergy um, into you know just like some kind of card you can pull out um, that would be actually probably a really good thing because some people have had issues with with dietary you know requirements and allergies and stuff. Yeah, because um, keep in mind so yeah, you might be putting things in the food that you wouldn't normally expect either. So, yeah. <laughs> you know, if, if there's any doubts, ask ahead of time to make sure that it's not peanuts or or milk products or, or whatever in there. Um, if you're a vegan, you will have a hard time because they like to use fish broth and eggs in a lot of stuff, almost everything that you would want to eat. So, um, so, so yeah. Uh, it, it's just, uh, sometimes, you know, what we, we think of as like the common name for a place you want to go. Like uh, the uh, Golden Pavilion, say in Kyoto. Um, some people, if, we, if you want, to, you know, ask someone where you're, you know, where it is or something, or uh, it might not be, you know, they might not call it that. It's actually, you know, yeah, Kinkakuji. So, um, you know, it's a situation like that. You might want to know sort of. Like if you ask them, where's the nearest uh, Shinto shrine? They're not. They might not know what the word shrine means in English. You're going to need to know the Japanese word for shrine. That but, sort of thing. I mean, yeah. If you're if you're following an English map. And uh, making your own way, then that's not a problem so much. Um, and most, most, a lot of chain restaurants and, and, and restaurants in, say, you know, areas that have uh, more tourists will have uh, English menus. 
Um, and uh, usually when you walk in there, they'll just kind of hand you that by default. So yeah, they, they assume that most foreigners don't know Japanese. So and they're kind of shocked if you do. Um, so yeah, some cultural things. All right. So um, this obviously doesn't cover everything that you need to know when you're over there, but these are some of the things that you might run into more often. So this up here, when you enter Japanese houses, oh, yeah. <laughs> um, when you enter Japanese houses and like some of the traditional places like the, the Ryokan or the, the hot spring resorts, there'll be an area in front of you that's like a step down from the rest of the building. You should take your shoes off there. That's called the Genkong? Yeah. If you wear your shoes onto their tatami mat floors, they're going to be very upset at you. And because, yeah, they don't want your dirty shoes all over the floor. So you take off your shoes there, and then um, often there'll be slippers, and you wear your slippers for the, in the rest of the house. And if you watch anime, you know, go back and watch the anime, you'll see this it happens all the time. Um, this is a toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, it's difficult to use. <laughs> well, for men too, I imagine, but I don't know firsthand. Um, you, you straddle it. You straddle the toilet and you squat. It's it's difficult. Less difficult if you're wearing a skirt, but it's difficult either way. Um, there's you'll run into those once in a while. I mean, most places will have um, more modern. Yeah, toilets. generally these are. In fact, they'll have the, really uh, fancy toilets yeah. that have the heated seats and play sound when you flush them and have the day, which might surprise you if you're not expecting it. This, these <laughs> these are these are mostly in older older old oh, like really old places. Uh, the train stations will probably have those. Um, bathrooms in public parks will have them. Um, your hotel's not going to have that. Um, malls are not going to have that. I mean, the, most malls have like the five hundred dollar toilet seat. Yeah. Uh, so. um, related. Um, a lot of times, uh, public restrooms um, won't have paper towels for you to dry your pants. Um, they. A lot of places they, they expect you to have these little towels to that you carry around for the purpose of drying your hands. Like if if you ever watch an anime and someone gets hurt and the person pulls out a little pocket handkerchief and hands it to them, that's that. That's it. They're called um, tenigui. Tenigui. and pretty much everyone in Japan owns at least one that they carry around with them at all times. Um, it's, it's sort of a derived from a traditional sort of multi-purpose cloth thing that people used to wrap things in. And they're sold everywhere. They're everywhere. And some of them are more washcloth type. Um, some of them are more like kind of like a bandana cloth. But they're they're all penny gooey. They all serve the same purpose. Um, yeah. Well, once again, also all most newer bathrooms are going to have the crazy hand dryers thing. That, uh, by the way, if you've seen the Dyson ones, the Dyson ones they they Dyson totally ripped off the, the Mitsubishi ones. Mitsubishi got there first. <laughs> Um, so, so yeah, so a good idea to have a washcloth with you just in case, and then also never a bad idea to have a little tiny bottle of hand sanitizer and maybe a packet of tissues, because uh, some, some... Train station bathrooms don't have Some less toilet used paper. toilets, like, <laughs> like train stations or the parks, uh, rural areas, they might not have toilet paper, they might not have soap. So just bring one with you, just in case, and it'll save you a lot of grief. Um, this is a coin tray. The or coin, that? yeah, the coin trays are int are really interesting. This is sort of a general theme of sort of uh, exchanging we don't know why things they that. Exist. Well, we do know why they exist. It's sort of yeah. I guess another traditional thing is the way that money used to be exchanged was in, in envelopes. Um, so the coin tray was like the modern replacement of the envelope to sort of formalize this exchange of money. Um, and so they, they, and I was I was shocked when, in, when I was there the first time. I, I'd never seen these before. They don't show up in anime or anything. You never see them. But on every uh, sort of you know a counter in, in, next to a, a cash register in convenience stores or basically anywhere else that you know you you buy things from, there's this little usually blue, often blue, sometimes black or a gray tray um, where you 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 put the money first before the cashier takes it. And if you give the money directly to the cashier, sometimes they'll they'll take it from you and then put it in the tray and then pick it up again. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Um. So just to also really quickly because we don't want to spend too much time, but uh, chopsticks. Never put your chopsticks straight up and down inside of your rice. It looks like what they do for incense at a funeral. 
and it's considered disrespectful. <laughs> Never put your chopsticks sticking up and down in food. Just lay them on top of the bowl or lay them next to the bowl. Um, eating and walking, it's becoming a little bit more relaxed nowadays, but traditionally eating while you're walking was considered bad manners. You're, you're expected to, you, know, you buy food from a vending machine or from a street stall, you're expected to go to the side of the, the path or the sidewalk, eat your food, then carry on traveling to wherever you're going. Same with drinks from vending machines, even. Yeah, so that's what actually in anime you'll see a lot of times when people buy stuff from vending machines, they sit down and they drink it like next to the vending machine. They don't walk around a bit so much. Um, and then umbrellas, there's usually umbrella stands outside of stores and stuff. Um, they're not, yeah, the, the, the umbrella stand often usually uh, convenience stores and uh, basically any, any store. Um, that is, you know, has an ex yeah, out, you know, an externally external storefront. No, not like a mall, obviously. But uh, um, it's going to have an umbrella rack. Those are not free umbrellas. Those yeah. are, you know, to put your umbrella in before you enter the store, so that you don't get their floor all wet if it's raining. Yeah. Um, so don't. It's hard to remember to pick your umbrella up again sometimes after. So you know, there's always uh, there's a giant market for umbrellas in Japan, pretty much. But. Um, I'm curious. Those, okay. Who's, like, okay, who is this kid eating? <laughs> oh, I said, I don't know. Oh, it's a, like a camera guard or something. <laughs> it's just a screenshot from the internet. <laughs> also, the, the best thing ever, don't tip. Don't tip yeah. anyone. You don't need don't to tip. tip. They <laughs> pay their, their wage staff high enough wage that tips are not necessary. They don't expect you to tip. If you leave money on the table, the waitress will probably run after you out the store and be like, sir, you left your money behind. It's happened. <laughs> yeah. Tipping is just, it doesn't happen. Yeah, the, the final amount on the bill is exactly what you pay on every time. And, okay. Oh, when walking without an umbrella, in Japan, do you are you supposed to have an umbrella or not? Well, that's, if I mean, it's if it's raining, if it's raining. They have a rainy season <laughs> during the summertime, so. Yeah, it's, it's mostly because, you know, there, there are a couple of months where it rains every day. It rains every so. day. <laughs> Um, you have a uh, place to get food. Uh, convenience stores are everywhere, and they're more convenient than convenience stores we have here, because first of all, they're everywhere, second of all, they sell everything. Um, everything. Yeah, so those are called konbini. I'll be, probably figure out where the, the word came from. Um, they even sell, like, extra underwear and stuff for, you know, the and businessmen who have to stay at the Castle Hotel overnight. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's, uh, you know, in, in big cities, you know, in, in, especially around near, uh, near uh, where's there might be a festival going on, you get a lot, you can get a lot of street food. Um, that stuff's really seasonal too. Uh, like in winter, there might be uh, uh, vendors with uh, like baked potatoes, pretty much like baked sweet, sweet potatoes. Um, fast food, you, know, you can find an increasing number of fast food places, uh, in addition to say you know, McDonald's, you know, there's uh, uh, Japanese like burger chains like Moss Burger. Um, they also, uh, you know, you probably heard of the kaiten sushi, which is the you know, conveyor belt sushi, where it's just you know, uh, plates of sushi going around. The know. color of the plate indicates how much money that plate of food is. So there'll usually be like a little key that tells you the gold plates are really expensive, the white plates are cheap. It's it's different for every restaurant. So make sure you you look at the the key before you start grabbing. Yeah, you do basically you stack them up, and at the end they total up how many plates you have and what color you know. Use the color to determine how much it was. Um, yeah, so that does get expensive fast um, if you're not looking. Um, American chain restaurants, um, they have Denny's over there. There's Outback too. Denny's, okay, actually, Denny's is uh, is owned by 7-Eleven Japan, and it's actually Japanese style food, and it's actually awesome. It's one of my favorite restaurants in Japan, which is hilarious <laughs> because I Denny's in America is one of my least favorite restaurants. <laughs> um, and then. Uh, a lot of areas um, in Japan might be famous for a particular kind of food or a particular way of preparing a type of food. So sometimes you'll have regional specialties um, or a certain restaurant in the area might be really well known. So it'll be like a, a, a regionally famous restaurant. Those are usually called meibutsu, which is basically like famous goods. Uh, I went to a city that was famous for a particular way of frying chicken. Um, and then there's dessert buffets, which is the middle picture there, it's a little bit hard to see, but uh, dessert buffets are dessert buffets. You go in, um, you pay a set amount of money per hour that you're there, and it's all you can eat sweets. Um, they will, 
many of them at least will charge you if you have too many leftovers on your plate. So try to, you know, just take a little bit at a time to finish off, um, you know, what you have on your plate. For whatever reason, and if any of you were at our bed panel yesterday, you, you might have heard this before, but it's kind of considered odd for men to love sweet things. <laughs> so if you're a male and you go into a dessert buffet by yourself, you might get some odd looks. You're not getting it kicked out and no one's gonna say anything nasty to you, but people might just be kind of like, looking your way a little bit more. Yeah, you'll notice that most, most guys who buy donuts are there with a friend. Yeah, yeah, so if you have a female companion with you, Take them with you to the dessert buffet. Okay. <laughs> no, that's all right. Um, you've probably heard of maid cafes and knows they're still around, uh, particularly in Akihabara. Um, most other big cities will have a few as well. They're um, harder to find. They tend to be like on the second or third floor of a larger building. So, you know, this, the, you might not see the sign because it's, it's not going to be a storefront with the maid cafe. There'll be like a sign up above about it and yeah. it might be in Japanese so you might not know that's pointing to a maid cafe but it'll if, be up there. If you're not familiar with maid cafes it's basically you pay more for kind of just okay food um, to have the experience of somebody in costume serving you. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. The food is kind of mediocre. <laughs> but, um, well, in, in the, but yeah a lot of places. Um, and you can pay extra experience. to have your photo taken with them. Usually you cannot take photos in a maid cafe without paying them for the opportunity. Um, yeah, so, they'll, they'll, yeah. Some of them are kind of like, fun because they're ridiculous themes, uh, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, they'll see like no camera signs on it and they'll, if you take a photo, they'll ask you to leave. It's not something, it's not, probably uh, not where you want to eat every day unless you have like really deep pockets. Um, ben, uh, uh, vending machines are, drink vending machines are everywhere. Um, absolutely everywhere. You'll see, you'll, you'll see like, oh, that yeah, just flow out of it. Street in the middle of nowhere city. Yeah. We'll have any machines up and down it. They basically light the streets. I mean, um, like here, you only see vending machines in a public building. There'll be vending machines like anywhere out on the roadside in a parking lot. And in winter, in winter, they uh, they actually heat the cans. So you can get like heated coffee cans or heated cocoa or something from a vending machine on a street. It's, Some of them will pour the coffee for you too. Like it'll it'll pop up a cup and it'll. Well, like, they, we have those here, like like they, they style. Uh, wait, is that? Yeah. yeah that's but what unlike I'm unlike the ones in America that do that, the ones in Japan actually work consistently. So, <laughs> um, something that is uh, good to be aware of if you're going to say like a bar, um, they they sometimes will have a table charge, which is basically sort of you know if you eat there, here's this extra flat rate you have to pay. Um, so make sure that to you, use the yeah, if you want to go to bars a lot, especially in Tokyo or um, in, in like fancy uh, upscale places like like you know Shibuya um, or really probably well, Ginza would be crazy, but uh, um, to ask if they have a table chart because otherwise you could sit down and you know at the end find out that there was an extra seventy dollars. It's usually not that much. It'd usually be like five or ten or something. Uh, the sign of that is usually if you sit down and they plate they put like. A uh, small plate of, of, of like nuts or something on the table. That probably is an indicator that there's some kind You're of table charge. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's usually just for bars, not regular restaurants. Um, obviously, lots of things to do. Uh, some for just some ideas. Um, okay, uh, lots of holidays. Japan loves holidays. Uh, like Bonadori is interesting to watch because of. Uh, Cities that stage really grand uh, public dancing events. Uh, obviously, cherry blossom viewing is a big deal. Uh, in summer, there are a lot of fireworks festivals that uh, can attract lots of people. Um, autumn leaf viewing is probably not as good in Japan as it is in Vermont, but um, it's still a thing that, that people do. Um, there are also some parades in summer, which are, are kind of actually surprisingly similar to American parades. They're kind of fun. Um, also, some anime-related events uh, uh, like uh, Komike, which is a comic market. Um, if you've seen uh, like Genshiken and Comic Party, it's the uh, crazy thing that and, you know. And uh, Ori Emo, uh, they <laughs> go to Comic as well. Um, and that's that's free. If you want to buy Dojin, you show up, you walk in there. Well, you fight with, you fight your way in there. Um, <laughs> and you, you walk around. It's actually it's really weird because it's actually like seventy-five percent Yaoi. Um, but, uh, oh, sorry, it's like 25% like Miku and uh, uh, Toho, and then 
you know, a, a big chunk of the rest is Yowie and then and other things that are not Yowie and not Toho. Or it's kind of like the fan small. fiction here in America. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, obviously, shopping. Uh, so, used, used anime merchandise is uh, cheap and in perfect condition and, uh, yeah, you just, you, you, you wish you had enough space in your luggage to just bring all this stuff back, because it's not, yeah. yeah. How, much is, how much would you pay for something like this? Well, I mean, it depends on what you're looking for, I mean. Um, but the thing is, like... It's usually, because um, a lot of the stores will sell used anime merchandise, so, like, pre-owned, it might still be in the box, it might not look like it's used, but it's been owned by someone else, there's usually a huge discount on it. You can find some really good deals. Like, $150 figures might end up being, like, $40. Plus, there's just more to choose from as well because, you know, here in, in America we can purchase anime figures, but we're not getting like everything that might be available in Japan. So, you might find figures that you never knew existed that are amazing. So, yeah, I mean, if you have space in your life, you're not going to pay overage charges for, for that, um, for being overweight or something uh, on your luggage, um, then uh, it can be a really good deal. Uh, shipping is not, shipping things back is sometimes, you know, can get pricey. Um, so yeah, and also gaming, used gaming stores are, are, have a lot of stuff. Um, um, other things you can do besides uh, shopping in anime centric, uh, there are museums. There's there are museums. Also, and, and museums too. Yeah, the, the <laughs> aquariums are really, really nice there. We went to two of them, they were great. Uh, temples and shrines, of course. Um, some temples and shrines are more famous than others. They're everywhere, and you'll probably see enough to get sick of them after a while. Um, castles, uh, the castles are pretty cool, although you know, a lot of them tend to be kind of similar, but it's definitely worth it to at least be one of them. Um, Landmarks like Tokyo Tower, Mount Fuji, uh, sporting events like baseball games might be kind of interesting. If you like baseball here, it's, it could be fun to go see a game there. Um, concerts. There are a couple Chinatowns in Japan, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> fun. Um, and then arcades. Uh, there's lots of arcades in Japan. They're much bigger um, and just different than the ones here in America, but they they might be fun to spend a couple hours in one time just to get the experience. And then there's various tours for, for various different interests in Japan as well. Um, this company, Pop Travel Japan, is actually amusingly owned by, run by Digital Manga Corporation. So uh, they know what they're doing in terms of this whole anime business. Um, they, they, for, they, they kind of uh, sort of suspended tours around the, uh, er, the earthquake a couple years ago. Um, they're planning on picking up again. Uh, they haven't had a, a new, another tour since then yet, but they're still uh, planning. Hopefully they'll they'll uh, have another package uh, available soon. Um, but those always look really good. I haven't done that yet, but uh, it looks like they they have good tours and they have anime themed tours and end up themed tours and all this other stuff. Um, you can get, go through them. You can go see things that you normally wouldn't be able to get into, like the uh, Tokyo Anime Fair, which I think was just this past week, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, a JTB in the past, which is actually the, the a uh, Japanese travel agency, has offered a anime theme tour for foreign tourists at some point. Um, it was 2011 is the last one. Um, I haven't seen any new information since then, but maybe it'll happen again. And many anime are set in actual real locations. Um, so you know, if you're interested in a particular anime, you can always you know, do some research online. You might find out that there's places. That's actually this slide. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, this this is not a full list. There, there's probably hundreds of anime out there that are based on real locations, you know, so if there's one that you're really interested in, like I said, you know, do your research online, you might find out that, hey, this is a place they can visit, that, you know, you can compare a screenshot of the anime and that's what it looks like. And, um, People do that with the with Washinomiya, which is the sort of shrine that was featured in Lucky Star. Um, that Washinomiya now gets people from everywhere. Just because it was in Lucky Star. Yeah. Um, so other anime related things. Uh, Ghib Ghibli has a museum. The Ghibli Museum is awesome. Um, but it's also really popular, so you actually have to buy your tickets to get there, to get in there ahead of time. Um, so you, you make, make sure you make arrangements for that um, if you want to head to there. Um, Actually, World Cosplay Fest is a free, giant cosplay, like, it's a internet, it's actually sort of a, um, like, finalists from different cons around the world go to compete there. Um, it's in August. Um, it's been in Nagoya for the last few years, I think, um, which is sort of in the middle of the country, but it's, it's totally free. Uh, that was a really fun thing to go to. Um, Tokyo Shopping, uh, Akihabara is obviously the most famous one. There's a couple other hotspots around Tokyo, such as Denden. Denden's actually in Osaka. 
That's it. That's in, 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 yeah, in Ikebukuro. Um, it's a little bit smaller than Akihabara, but it's still worth checking out. Um, chain stores, Madarake is. This the, is for, for buying stuff. Yeah, buying the, stuff. the picture that we had before, it's down there in the corner again. That's, that's Madarake. Madarake. That's like literally shelves and shelves and shelves full of these. They're, they're nice. usually, the stores are usually like five, eight. The one, uh, well, one at Akihabara is eight stories. So they're usually, they're usually like three or four or five stories. It's crazy. Um, and then uh, book off, card off are, are used. Use books. Use. Uh, like games and and uh, actually electronics. And then recycle shops, they're they're kind of like Goodwill, where it's used goods from anywhere. You know, like there'll be plates and cups and used furniture and used gym equipment or whatever. Um, but once in a while, you'll get lucky. You'll find some some treasures in there. Adam and I went to one recycle shop. I found two figures from uh, the Pop Wonderland uh, book series, which got me really excited because I couldn't find them anywhere else. And Adam actually found a Bandai if, Pippin. If anybody's heard of the Bandai Pippin, which was Apple's game console that was marketed by Bandai um, <laughs> in, the in, in the mid 90s, I got one in, in new in the box for like $50. That, they, go, they go on eBay for like 500 There's not that many that actually like. They, yeah, they, didn't, they did not sell so. them, which is why you've never heard of them, so they're rare. Uh, <laughs> but you can find interesting uh, stuff there. Um, so yeah, if, I mean, if you if you want to, if you're thinking about maybe going for, for a longer period of time than the 90 days you got on a tourist visa, or uh, in particular if you want to um, uh, spend more time in Japan learning Japanese, um, I actually when I was there for the year I was actually at uh, the IG Center for Japanese Study Studies, which is uh, the Yamase, Yamase Institute, which is um, in uh, uh, um, Okazaki, which is sort of in the middle of the country. Um, then there's also the JET program where basically you go there and you teach English to Japanese students. You get paid for it a little bit. You, yeah, there's like a stipend <laughs> and um, it gets you a work visa so you can stay there for, uh, it's usually for one year at first and then you can extend your stay um, once you complete the first year. And then there's, um, it's called woofing, uh, which Adam and I have not done so we don't have that much knowledge about it, but basically you go and you work on a Japanese farm and the farmer gives you a place to stay and feeds you in exchange for your help on their farm. Um, basically what tourist or what visa you get is between you and the person employing you. Um, well, no, it's, it's, it's a tourist visa. Yeah, okay. I mean, you're, you're probably gonna just end up on a tourist visa. But I mean, if, you really, if you really don't wanna have to pay for a place to stay, um, <laughs> Then uh, that, yeah, it sounds like an interesting thing. I know someone who's actually from high school that that's currently doing this sort of thing in Costa Rica right now, and uh, it, he's he's an interesting guy, so he's having an interesting time. But um, yeah, so they, you can, yeah, it, it's a it's an option. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And then um, our next slide is just uh, the, the reading list. It's on your handout, so don't feel like you have to write this down. Also, if you're interested in you know another option would be getting a job there. Um, and uh, you know, if you don't have any, you you can actually work work teaching English um, through other things that you know, not just JET, but actual uh, you know actual uh, English language schools there. Um, and uh, but oftentimes, oftentimes, oftentimes you actually have to um, be there first. So can you go back to last slide? Oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah, yeah, I that's think the, 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 uh, there should be a link for the Yamasa Institute and the JET that's program yeah, Yamasa, on your handout. Yamasa.org, I think, actually. Um, if you haven't gotten a handout on your way in, um, we might be able to give you an extra. Um, on, a, on a student visa, if you want to go for a, long, for a, a longer period of time to, say, learn Japanese, you can get a, a student visa through, Yamasa will get you a student visa, which you can actually, uh, which have a, has a maximum um, of two years. Um, I was only there for a year. Once you, once you use that once, you can't use it again. So you can only ever have one uh, non-college student visa. Then you could also get, you know, go back to, you know, college in Japan or something, um, and you know, get that. But uh, yeah. So, like I said, additional resources. If you have the handout, these are all written down for you already. These are just some books that, um, looking through our like our book collection, we felt like were probably guide. good for um, people who haven't been to Japan before. Or might not know a lot of Japanese already. Writing guide. Somebody else wrote a uh, a uh, guidebook to Akihabara. This is probably not so up to date now because things change there a lot. But there's a guidebook for, for like everything. I mean, this one's entirely just about hiking. So, um, yeah. 
And then finally our last slide is just a, a big list of websites. All of these websites are on the handout, however, except for the third one down, gnto.go.jt slash English, which is right. the website for... The JNTO is the J Japanese National Tourist Organization, and they have an increasingly amount, uh, increasing amount of information. A lot of it's really good. Um, so that's definitely uh, somewhere to check out. Um, I'm going to be posting this presentation on japanjoho.com. There's nothing there yet if you go there right now. It's like test, it says, I think. But I'll, I'll put stuff up there later. Um, and you can feel free so yeah. to add, um, email yeah, ask, ask me, ask us questions. Um, I, I really do recommend Yamasa as a language school. Um, that, was a, that was a pretty good experience. Um, it's moderately priced and they have their own housing, their own housing, their housing is pretty good. Most Japanese language schools you'll have, you'll be on your own, you have to find your own apartment somewhere. But Yamasa actually owns all their own stuff. So they own their own bar too. Yeah, they actually have a, have a bar. It's kind of odd, but. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, I know we're a little over here, but that's because we started late. Uh, any questions? Okay, so I've been to places before as a tourist. Um, I've been to Mexico before, and usually I find with uh, when I went there as a tourist, that there was like three weeks that you can stay and like after that you start getting bored and stuff. Is there like a, like a, like, that's amount of time that like, it's um, enough time to where you see everything, but not too much time to where like you're sitting around and you're bored. I, I, I'm not I'm not the best one to answer yeah. that because I, I was there for a year and I didn't run out of things to do. So. <laughs> Let me answer okay. it. Um, so the first time I went to Japan was just for a week. I was at the end of the study abroad. I went over, met him over there. Um, like we met up over there. Um, the one week was not enough time to see everything just in Tokyo. Um, there were some things that like you know I, I was hoping to see that we just did not have time for. Uh, the second time I went was for one month during the middle of his one year stay there. Um, we spent one week in Tokyo again, one week in Osaka, and two weeks at the apartment he was he had from Yamas Institute. Um, because it was my second time in Japan, and my second time in Tokyo, the one week was enough that time because I'd already seen like half the things I wanted to see. Um, and the one week for Osaka was pretty good um, because you know, you spend like one or two days exploring Osaka and then you, it's really close to a bunch of other cities like Nara and Kyoto, which have some interesting cultural things like they've got some of the castles and uh, famous shrines around there and famous temples. Since Kyoto was the original capital, there's a lot of historic stuff. Yeah, so we, we spent like, you know, a couple days in Osaka and then we took day trips out to the other cities. Um, and that seemed to work pretty well. So I would say two weeks um, might be a good idea. Um, but you can, I, I, I you sort of name them. I mean, if you have, you can spend more time there. And then it really depends on what you're interested in. If you're if you're interested in the historic stuff, or or you know, really traditional or cultural things, then you could spend a really really long time in Kyoto and not see everything. Yeah. Um, for um, example, so. But yeah, I, I mean, for for two weeks, probably be good. Um, yeah, I'd but say for most you, people, you gotta, be like you know, if you, if you can do two weeks, if you can afford two weeks, two weeks is probably a good time. Yeah, but I mean, really, you got you got to look at you know, make a list of like, this is all the stuff I want to see, and these are all the things I want to do, and then think to yourself like, you know, what is reasonable to do in a single day? How many days? If I, I would overestimate the amount of time it would take to do each thing, because you might think, oh, I can hit up Tokyo Tower and Akira Bar in one day, and then you'll find out that you accidentally spent five hours at Tokyo Tower, and there's really not any time to get over to Akira Bar and shop for the store yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> is the Jet Institute pay enough to go to the Well, Jet, jet is a, jet's, a, jets kind of a, 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 a different. It, it's a, an interesting arrangement. Okay. Uh, it, it's a program that's existed since the '80s. Um, I, I actually, I don't know when English has done, actually, actually done it myself, so I don't know all the details. Um, but I mean, it's really more like a subsist subsistence kind of okay. uh, salary. Is there a way to have sort of a closed loop of you teach English for the amount of money it costs to learn Japanese? Uh, yes, actually. Um, Himasa um, actually has a cultural center for teaching Japanese people about Japanese cultural things. But they also teach, they also have an English language school, sort of as part of that. Um, so actually, I did work, actually, I, I worked for McDonald's once for a week. That was um, interesting. Uh, <laughs> also um, horrible, which is why it was only for a week. 
Well, that was that was because the, I was in a mall and the place was not big enough, and it took like three hours for them to clean up after. And all the other restaurants in the mall and the food court had already cleaned up, and I was like, why is this so inefficient? It was so inefficient that it drove me crazy. Um, but yeah, so I actually made. Yeah, I was getting like thirty dollars an hour teaching English for for a little while. Um, if it's something that you think you could, you know, that you'd be pretty good at, then I mean, that's obviously well, I wasn't associated for it. It's, I, you know, I found, but, it's um, probably difficult to set up a paying job. Before yeah, we go, but once like, like, you like have if you, to wait till you get there, if you go to like, Yamasa, if you get there and you say to the you know someone there, you're like, hey, I'm looking, I, I want to get a job, they'll they'll find a way. A lot of other students in the school who work for other language um, schools in the area, and you know, you might be able to, to make some friends and you know get in that way. Um, there are a lot, you know, sort of there are a lot of places in that area, and they hire pretty frequently, actually, and it, it does pay reasonably well. And then, of course, you know, you have to look at your time management because if you're a student and working, you're not going to have much time for you know experiencing Japan. So you got to. Keep that in mind as well. Yeah, um, but you, you want to make sure that you you know you can deal with kids. I mean, if you're not, you <laughs> that was that was my thing. Is I don't have so much experience dealing with kids. So. Hmm. Um, did it take a long time for you to save up for your initial visit? Um, well, actually, initially I went through RIT with the KIT program, whatever it should be, um, which was a pretty good deal because they kind of subsidized a lot of it. Um, and uh, I mean, other than that, my last trip was almost entirely funded on a credit card that I spent the last three years paying off. <laughs> so, bad idea, by the way. Um, but yeah. <laughs> also, you kind of overspent. Yeah. <laughs> but um, for me, the when I well, really, both times I, I went there, um, my parents paid for my airfare with their credit card using their credit card miles. They stored up to like. I paid them back for the plane ticket, but the result was that the plane ticket was way, way cheaper. Um, but it's like, uh, the first time I went, I think it was a $3,000 round trip ticket. We used credit card miles, we got down to like $300. But that's because my dad had a trouble with number of airline miles. Um, nowadays, I think it's a little bit cheaper, but people were like uh, $1,500 to $2,000 for a round trip ticket. Depending on what you want to do, um, it can be like the, the getting there, getting back might be the most expensive part. Because hotels you can stay really cheap. Uh, food wise you can eat really cheap. Um, so and, and you know travel wise the trains it, it can take a, a normal train, not the bullet train. It, it it's you know it, it, it can be uh, or actually alternatively a highway overnight highway buses it can be like fifty dollars to get from uh, like half half the cost of the bullet train. Um, to get you know like across the country, um, you can so you're expensively once you're in the country. Yes, but getting there is, is can be the expensive part. So, anyone else?